Day 2 Operations with Satellite 6, Ansible and Red Hat Insights for Windows Administrators, provided by Red Hat and Stone Drill Group. My name is Andrea Alexander with Stone Drill Group, and I will be your host for today's event. In today's workshop, we will demonstrate how to configure Ansible, Red Hat Insights, and Satellite 6 to effectively manage RHEL servers. For those of you not familiar with Stone Drill Group, we are a Red Hat Apex partner specializing in DevOps transformation. We work with companies of all sizes to implement best practices using Red Hat solutions. As part of our service offerings, we have a few items that may be of interest to those attending today's session. The first is our Satellite 6 Accelerator. This service provides the end-to-end -end solution to bring your RHEL servers into a single management platform, allowing you to manage your infrastructure with a single console. In our Accelerator engagement, we take care of installing and configuring Satellite 6, registering clients, and integrating with Active Directory. We do provide all the subscriptions needed as well as consulting services to ensure you successfully implement satellite and have the necessary controls in place. Key areas improved through the implementation of Red Hat Satellite include content management, patching and software management, as well as provisioning and subscription management. The second item I wanted to bring to your attention is our Ansible Migration Accelerator Engagement. This service provides the subscriptions and services necessary to implement the Ansible automation platform. In our accelerator engagement, our consultants conduct a thorough analysis of our client's current automation infrastructure, managed digital offerings, as well as their desired future state of digital offerings. From there, we will create and execute a migration plan that establishes a new consolidated automation framework, provides a migration path for existing assets, and enables cross-functional teams to develop and share automation deployment methodologies. We do provide all the subscriptions needed as well as consulting services to ensure you successfully implement Ansible. Key areas improved through the implementation of Red Hat Ansible platform include one architecture, interface and development language for all automation, repeatable processes to migrate legacy automation workflows, and a compliant process to develop and publish automation tasks. And finally, I wanted to make sure you were aware of our complimentary five-day access to today's lab environment. This is offered to those attendees who participate in the entire workshop today and also schedule an initial consultation. To request your complimentary consultation, email us at let's do this at stonedrillgroup.com and our team will get you scheduled for a follow up discussion. This information is available on our website at stonedrillgroup.com and we'll be sending this deck out following today's event so you will have access to these details as well. And just a few housekeeping items. If you are experiencing audio issues, you may dial in using the toll free number provided on the screen. That's 1-888-788-0099. Our webinar ID is 923-6206-5293, and the password is 725-510. If you do need assistance, please contact a member of the Stone Door Group technical support team at webinar at stonedoorgroup.com, and our team members are standing by ready to assist. For those interested, we are recording today's event. We will be sending out links to all participants for access to the event recording and the presentation materials. Today's workshop format includes both a presentation and a lab demonstration. The presentation will last approximately 20 minutes. Those of you who elected the hands-on lab um, should have received credentials in a separate email. And all others are welcome to remain and follow along the demonstration if you choose to not participate in the hands-on lab. During the lab, we ask that all participants submit questions through Zoom's Q&A feature. You can find this on the bottom of your screen where it says Q&A. And please note that this is different from the chat feature. Our instructors will address your questions as soon as they are able. At this time, I'd like to introduce our featured instructor, Eric Archer with Stone Door Group. Eric is a senior consultant at Stone Door Group where he helps integrate, helps clients integrate with Red Hat Enterprise Linux, supported by Red Hat Satellite and Identity Manager. We also have on the line for technical support, Mike Savage with Red Hat and Dale Ulrich with Stone Door Group. They will be providing any additional support needed during today's lab environment. Again, if you do need assistance, please use, utilize Zoom's Q&A feature. Thanks to our talented team of instructors for facilitating this workshop, and Eric, I will pass the session over to you. Thank you, Andrea. <clears throat> well, welcome, everybody. So we are now going to start talking about what we're doing today. We're going to be looking at um, what this workshop is all about, and as Andrea mentioned, 
I will be doing a demonstration and then there's going to be plenty of time for you guys to work on this hands-on. So the purpose of this workshop is to demonstrate how to configure Ansible on Red Hat, how to configure Red Hat Insights and Satellite 6 and have them all work together effectively to manage our RHEL servers. Um, we're gonna be performing inventory discovery. Um, we'll look at some of the different day two operations we can use or work with in satellite. We'll be enforcing configurations and looking at performing self-healing for RHEL set servers. <coughs> So here are some of the main reasons why customers are choosing to take this uh, workshop. The first thing is best practices. So there are some industry recognized entities that produce best practices or that have identified best practices. Uh, specifically in terms of vulnerabilities uh, and issues of that nature. And we want an easy way to implement those best practices. And we're gonna be looking at these best practices and we're gonna be looking at actually how we can enforce the configuration for these best practices. And we're gonna be doing that using Satellite and Ansible and Red Hat Insights. So all three of them are all gonna work together to allow us to determine what our best practices are, what kind of security vulnerabilities we may have on our system, and then how we can remediate those using all three together. And so we're gonna be looking at setting that up. And by doing it through Ansible, we automate some of the management of our server. So we can go in and we can actually figure out, okay, what vulnerabilities do we have in our system? how do we want to remediate those, set it up as an Ansible playbook, and then just run the playbook, and it all gets handled for us. So we don't have to go in and manually make changes to all of our servers to follow these industry best practices. So we have some assumptions with this workshop that you have responsibility for administering some RHEL servers. Um, assume that, otherwise you probably wouldn't be here in this workshop. We also assume that you may have some technical challenges. So you may have challenges discovering what servers you actually have to manage. So how many servers do you have to manage? What do you have to manage? And specifically, what is the configuration of those servers? You know, historically that could be a very time consuming process. If you had to go out and manually look at each one of your servers and try to figure out, okay, is it, um, does it have this vulnerability? Does it have that vulnerability? So we wanna automate the entire process. We wanna automate the ability to determine what servers you've got. Um, now there is some hands-on with that, which we're gonna actually be doing in the lab. Uh, we are going to <coughs> bring those servers into the satellite environment we're then going to be able to register them with Red Hat Insights so that we can then see what vulnerabilities we have and then we can develop a plan to remediate those issues. We can then go ahead and run the playbook. So all of these things are um, kind of assumptions that we make. Now I'm gonna make, I'm gonna do a quick um, change up real quick just because one of the things that we have to do in the lab is actually configure our lab environments. So each person's going to be configuring their um, lab environment and this also involves an Ansible playbook. So I'm actually going to be bringing in a, another screen. So uh, at the top of the page is a um, website where the lab guide is basically it's been published. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put that into a chat window. And just send this out to everybody. So you should be able to <clears throat> access the lab guide. Now, the lab guide is not a real big um, concern at this point, but what is a concern is logging into <coughs> the Bastion host. Um, 
and you can log into this at this point using um, SSH, PuTTY. Um, I, for Windows systems, I like a tool called MOBA Xterm. And so you're going to log into the Bastion host um, using the user account and password that's been provided to you. You guys should have got an email with that information. And then there are some commands to run. Now, what I'm showing you here on the screen right now is actually included in the beginning of the lab guide. So I um, shared that URL with you in the chat window. So you can either do it from the beginning of the lab guide <coughs> or you can do it from right here. So you're just gonna go in and you're going to um, clone a Git repo. When you do that, it's going to create a uh, directory. You're gonna change into that directory <clears throat> and then you are going to go ahead and run a playbook. Now this is going to create our infrastructure. It's going to be creating three hosts. Um, we're actually gonna be using two for this lab, but this process can take a little while. So I wanted everyone to get started just on that part of it. Um, once the playbook starts running, um, then we will uh, be able to continue with the uh, discussion we were having, but I wanted to get everybody started, everyone who's going to actually be doing the hands-on lab. Uh, I wanted to get you guys started to this point so that you can <clears throat> have your environment up and ready um, relatively soon after we finish the uh, discussion and um, the demo. So uh, that is um, something that I wanted to start. So, and the, the Bastion host is bastion01.demo. or demo1.pd.stonedoor.io. So that is uh, the host you should be able to access using the user account and password that was provided to you. So you should be able to see that. Um, so I'll give you guys just a couple more minutes. Um, Hopefully you guys have the lab guide and um, you can copy and paste out of that. But just for those of you that um, haven't gotten the lab guide downloaded yet, uh, I'll give you guys a chance to type this out. Now, one of the biggest issues you guys need to be concerned about when you're going through the labs is typos. There is some things where you're going to be entering commands at the command line, you should be able to copy and paste out of the lab guide. Uh, if not, you may have to type it in. And there are some points where you're going to have to do some typing. And I'm gonna cover that in a few minutes when I actually get into the actual demo itself. So I'm gonna demonstrate what we're doing and then you guys will have the ability to go ahead and do that hands-on. So I'm gonna jump back into the presentation at this point and uh, hopefully everyone got this up and running and started so that your playbook is running and it's starting to build your environment. So did I, ah yes, so, <clears throat> Before I actually begin the demonstration and the lab, I wanted to remind everybody that we're going to be hosting some additional workshops in the coming months. So we have uh, the uh, Migrate Legacy Applications coming up on August 5th, obviously the May 5th and June 9th, we've uh, already passed those by, but we have this migrating legacy applications coming up and it's basically how to configure OpenShift on IBM Cloud to migrate your, L your legacy applications to OpenShift. Then we have our service offerings. So we have our satellite six and our Ansible migrations. So with these engagements, we do provide the end, end solution to Im implementing the best practices using Red Hat solutions. And as we already talked about, you can get in complimentary access to today's lab environment for five days. Uh, so just reach out to us at let's do this at stonedoorgroup.com 
and we can give you guys access so you guys have um, an environment to practice and um, learn uh, how to work with um, satellite, with Ansible, with Insights. So it's an environment where you can get in there and you can practice and do whatever you want and you really can't mess anything up. It's not a uh, production environment for you guys. Uh, it's isolated, so it gives you guys kind of free reign to kind of do whatever you want um, and then just more time to actually learn these technologies. So. <coughs> now, at this time, we're going to actually continue with the demonstration. We're going to get into the hands-on lab. So you guys should have received your credentials to access the optional hands-on lab. Uh, your participant, or you should see the lab guide uh, that should be posted in the chat session as well. Um, so if you have any questions, we can look at those through the Q&A feature. And I'm going to uh, go ahead and take a look at the Q&A right now because it looks like we do have a few questions. So I want to get to those before we jump into the lab. Okay. All right, so uh, there is in the um, Git clone um, or in the lab guide, there is a uh, backslash under the Git lab um, for the Git clone. So you actually need to remove that backslash. I thought I had done that. Um, yeah, so t take out the backslash and that would, uh, then your command is gonna run properly. So let's see, looks like some of these have been answered. And then I got the question about, um, the unique user ID. Um, so we do have, um, some extra accounts and then let's see if we, let's see, I'm trying to, figure how we want to do this. Um, so let's see, because I'm looking for uh, the account that asked that question to try and um, get someone to send you that information via a chat session. So let me see. <clears throat> okay, so I'm finding out. Let's see, I have an anonymous attendee. All right, so yes, once again, in that git clone command, you need to remove the backslash. So for that um, first git clone command, you need to remove the backslash and then it will run, it will work properly. Um, ah, and someone asked for the uh, lab manual. Yeah, the, the backslash was something that, um, 
when I was formatting the lab guide, I had it in Google Docs and then I took it out of Google Docs and had to put it back in. And it, uh, the backslash is a special character in um, Unix or Linux and you would put it at the end of a line if you actually wanted to continue that line with the line below it, which I didn't end up doing since it's all one line, uh, the backslash is actually causing uh, an issue. So we just need to remove that. Okay, Jason, um, they're sending you the uh, correct information. And let's see, let me go ahead and repost the link in the chat window. All right, so. So yes, I, I've reposted the uh, URL for the lab guide. All right. I, um, Dan, I noticed in the chat window, um, the username, or it's not user XX, it's whatever your username is. I just put that in as kind of a placeholder um, just to let you guys know that you, you need to use the username that was provided to you. It should be you, your login, uh, as long as you requested um, to be part of the lab, uh, it should be your email address that you use to register, but it's just the first name. It, anything, the at symbol and beyond, delete that. Other than that, it's just um, the beginning of your email address. So yeah, it's di different accounts than uh, what we had in the first session. So those of you that attended the first uh, workshop, the uh, user accounts have changed the way that we're doing those has changed. So it is not the same. Uh, yes, the other question is, do we need the dot slash? Um, yes, th those you will need to use, but the uh, the backslash in the middle of the git clone command and running the Ansible playbook, both of those can be removed. <coughs> so we're gonna, so yeah, the usernames will be the same. Um, Jason, it looks like you're, uh, oh, you have a username that now works. Okay, so hopefully everyone is in. Um, so hopefully everybody's in and can start the Ansible playbook running because that's going to be the, the most time consuming. So um, yeah, so it looks like pretty much everybody has, oh, I see, all right, hold on do this again so and I have posted the uh, link to the lab guide to everyone in the chat room again um, just because I want to make sure that everybody gets this um, I don't want anyone to uh, be looking around for that so the link to the lab guide is in the chat and with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the actual demo. 
So here is my lab environment. I ran my Ansible playbook. And it finished. And when your Ansible playbook finishes, you're going to see something very, very similar to this. So there's a task where it's going to print your lab information. This is very, very important. Uh, it mentions that you should see lab, and then it identifies a uh, file. So it's going to be slash lab01 um, something dash lab environment dot txt. So this text file is very, very important. Um, I'm actually going to be copying and pasting this information into a <coughs> lab file or into a uh, document that I have. And I'm going to move this out of the way just so we don't really need it. That's not what I wanted. It's trying to be difficult for me. All right, so I have that. All right, so I'm seeing still another request. All right, so yeah, I posted in the chat window once again, because I got another request for this. All right, and so for mine, all right, so I have, the information um, for my hosts that I'm going to need. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a look in this file. Copy and paste is not doing what I want today. So when I pull this up, when I look in this lab file, it's going to give me some very important information. The first one, the first piece of information that I really need is my UUID. So this is <clears throat> going to be used several times throughout the lab. And there's a note in the lab guide where it talks about this. Um, there are several places where in the lab guide, it's going to reference things like rel8 client zero question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, dot demo one, dot pd, dot stone door, dot io. So in the lab guide, I've left it as kind of open because obviously everyone's going to have a different UUID. Anytime you see those four question marks on a command, 
um, anywhere in the lab guide, if you're running a command and it's got those four question marks, you need to replace that with your UUID. So whatever your UUID is, that's what you're gonna need to use. Now we're going to be working with a couple of our systems today, I already mentioned. So we're gonna be working with our RHEL 8 client. And so I have a particular IP address. Your .txt file, your lab01, whatever it is, .lab-environment.txt, it's gonna give you your UUID number, it's gonna give you your IP address and the fully qualified domain name for your RHEL 8 client. We're also going to be working with the SAT6 server. So it is running on RHEL 7, but we're actually running Satellite 6. So Satellite 6 is the application, RHEL 7 is the operating system. So that's what we have to work with at this point. So the next thing that I want to do, now I have my <coughs> SAT6 server. And it is not liking that today. Nope, not liking that at all. So give me one second. It's gonna make it a bit of a pain. All right, so with that. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into a, an RDP client. That's one thing that you guys will need to set up is an RDP client and establish a connection to uh, your Bastion host. Now, I am using a tool called Remina. So it's R-E-M-M-I-N-A. So uh, Remina is the tool that I'm using. And the reason I'm doing that, um, you know, there's obviously like an RDP uh, client that you can, that you got with any of uh, your Windows systems, uh, Mac systems, that type of thing. <clears throat> My desktop that I use is actually a RHEL uh, 7 desktop. So I had to go find an RDP tool. And so I'm using this tool called Ramina. So I've logged in. Now, when I did that, once I logged into Ramina, I actually went, up, um, it's actually going to take you to <coughs> the Bastion host, which is also a RHEL 8 system. I went up to activities in the upper right hand corner, and it may take a little bit, and I actually selected the Firefox icon. So I did that, and that's what gave me the window you're seeing here. I also went to activities. Um, and selected, there's a little grid icon, and I opened up a, a, uh, a um, terminal session. Now I'm gonna go in here to my <coughs> Firefox session, and I'm going to go ahead and access my satellite server. Now, when I do that, I'm going to get this security warning. And I know that I'm gonna do that. It's because it is using a self-signed certificate. It doesn't have an official certificate chain and I'm fine with that. So I'm going to just click on the advance button. I will then scroll down and I will accept the risk and continue. Once I'm in, I'm going to log in and the username is admin, the password is just Red Hat. Obviously not the greatest security, but it's for a workshop, so we're fine with that. So I'm not gonna worry about saving this. So here is my satellite environment. 
So this was configured, this was built by your Ansible playbook, but there are some things that I'm going to need to do for this particular workshop. So in order to support the RHEL 8 client that we're gonna be working with, um, we're gonna bring it in as a satellite client. We're then going to set up Ansible <coughs> on Red Hat, and then we're going to be working with Red Hat Insights. So there's some things that I need to do just to prepare for that RHEL 8 client. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on this main tab over here on the left that says content, and I'm going to click on subscriptions. And when that comes up, I have a couple options. Uh, the first one in the upper right-hand corner, it says manage manifest. Because we don't have a manifest right now, there's also this blue button in the middle that says import a manifest. You can click on either one, they will take you to the same place. So it opens up this ability to bring in a manifest. Down in the lower section, there is the browse button. So I'm going to click on that and it's going to open up this <clears throat> directory listing. And right now I'm on my account slash desktop. I don't have anything. I'm actually gonna click on the home folder for myself. So up here at the top, you have this little icon. It looks like a house or a home. And I'm just going to click on that and it opens up a few other possibilities. And what I'm looking for is this manifest underscore SDG dash red hat and it's basically a zip file. So I'm going to click on that. So I'm gonna highlight that. You'll see that in blue. And then I will go ahead and click open. So this is going to start importing my manifest. So this is going to give me several entitlements. I only need it really one because we've only got one lab system or one client we're gonna be working with, but that's okay. But so it's bringing in this subscription so that then we can start working with some RHEL repositories and uh, get those synchronized. So it's importing our manifest. And it will, will take a little bit of time. All right, so that is done. <clears throat> And you can see I now have several entitlements. I'm now going to go to content and Red Hat repositories. And in the lab guide, I've given you some very specific entries to put into the search window. So these will give us access to the very specific repositories that we want. So I've done the first one, which is my satellite tools for RHEL 8. I'm going to click on this little arrow and I'm going to click on the blue plus mark to enable it. Then I'm actually gonna combine two of these together. <clears throat> so I'm also going to go ahead and select my RHEL 8. Base OS, I'll also expand this. <clears throat> now in your lab guide, it actually breaks these down into kind of two sections and that's fine, um, you can do it either way. So I've now enabled a couple repositories. The next thing I need to do is I need to sync those repositories from Red Hat to my satellite server. So I go to the content main tab and I go to the sync status sub tab. And this is going to bring up a web page where I can see what repositories I have enabled. So I just clicked on expand all to see everything. I'm then going to select all because I want to synchronize everything. <clears throat> and I'm going to go ahead and click on synchronize now. So this is going to start the synchronizing process. The satellite tools will actually take place fairly quickly. <clears throat> 
and then we have the base OS RPMs. That's going to take a little bit more time, but that's okay. I can let that run while I do these next pieces. So I've got to configure certain entities in order to support this RHEL 8 client that we're going to bring in as a satellite client. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to content, the content main tab, and I'm going to go down and I'm going to select the activation keys sub tab. And it's going to come up and tell me I don't have any activation keys. Oh well, yeah, that's because it's a new installation of satellite. I'm going to click on the blue button to create it. And I'm just going to call this 55AK. Now for my environment, I'm just going to pick the library because that's my only choice. For my content view, I'm going to select the default organization view. Now environments and content views are kind of advanced topics that we don't really have time to get into, but they allow for you to have a very granular, very controllable patching structure and management structure for your servers that are your satellite clients. So this is something that we would come in and set up if we were doing uh, one of our satellite engagements. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. <clears throat> so this now created my activation key. There's a couple things that I still need to do. First of all, I need to add a subscription to this activation key. So I'm going to go into the subscriptions tab up here at the top. Then I go down a little lower and I click on the add section. And I'm going to select the checkbox by my employee SKU entitlement and I'm going to add selected. Now once I do that, you can see that I don't have anything additional add. I only have one subscription. So I'll go back to list and remove and you can see I now have these entitlements added to this activation key. My next step is to go to the repository sets section. And I have a couple different repositories that are listed here. I have my Enterprise Linux base OS and its status is enabled by default. But you can see my Red Hat Satellite Tools is disabled by default. I want to fix that. So I'm going to click on the checkbox for that. Then I'm going to go up here to Select Action. And I'm going to override this to Enabled. And with that, I'm done. You don't have to save your activation key. When you make a change here, it automatically gets applied. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to create an operating system. So this is a requirement for another thing we're going to create in a few minutes called a host group. So the host group requires an operating system, so I've got to create that. Even though it's really not being used, um, it's more commonly used for actually provisioning a new <coughs> host, and you can actually do provisioning from satellite. We're not going to do that, but to bring our existing client in as a satellite client, we've got to do these steps. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create an operating system. I'm just going to call it rel underscore 8.2. My major version will be 8. My minor version is going to be 2. Description, I'm going to call it Red Hat. 8.2. Um, for the family, we're going to make it Red Hat. For the architecture, the root password hash, I'm not going to worry about that. For the architecture down here at the bottom, we have this x86 underscore 64, and I'm going to move that over to my selected items. Now, once I've done that, I'm then going to go into my partition table. And I am going to select my kickstart default. So under partition tables, I've got a lot of different options. I'm going to select kickstart default. Then I'm going to go to installation media. And this is going to be just a Fedora mirror. At that point, I'm done. I don't have to worry about templates or parameters. So I just set up my operating system values, partition table, and installation media. And then down at the bottom, I'm going to click on submit. So that creates my operating system. Once that is done, <coughs> I am going to go in and I'm going to go to the configure main tab and the host groups sub tab. 
And at this point, I don't have a host group, but I need to set one up. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on create host group. I am going to give it a name. And I'm just going to call it 55HG. For my lifecycle environment, I'm just going to select library. My content view is gonna be the default organization view. Content source is actually going to be the satellite server. And the puppet environment is production. So that's all I need to do in the host group tab. I don't have to worry about Ansible roles at this point, puppet classes or network, but I do need to go into operating system. For my architecture, I'm gonna select x86-64. For the operating system, I'm gonna do Red Hat 8.2. That will allow me to select things down below. I'm going for my media, I'm gonna do my Fedora mirror and my partition table will be my kickstart default. I don't have to about worry about pixie loader or root password at this point. Uh, <clears throat> these should be correct, but I just want to verify for locations. I want to make sure that lab is a selected item for organization, SDG is a selected item. And for activation key, I go into this tab. When I click on it, it actually gives me a list of any activation keys I have. I only have the one. So I go ahead and I select the 55AK. Now, one thing that you do need to understand is with host groups, you do actually have to click submit. So with operating systems, you don't. With host groups, you do. So now I have my host group. So I have now configured everything that I need for registering my RHEL 8 client system. Now I'm gonna go up into hosts and I'm gonna select content hosts. You can see it actually lists three at this point. It's actually all three of them are <coughs> actually your satellite server. You'll also notice subscription status. You see this little red X. And that sometimes bothers people. You know, nobody wants to see the red X that normally indicates there's a problem. Well, in this case, it's not an actual problem. Your satellite server, <coughs> excuse me, is actually registered to the Red Hat um, website. So it's registered directly with Red Hat in the customer portal, so access.redhat.com. And so it's not getting its subscription from itself. When you look at content hosts, if you see a green um, mark here, that means that it's properly subscribed from the satellite. So right now the satellite doesn't know its own subscription information because it's subscribed to Red Hat. So not a problem at all, but I just wanted to point that out because people sometimes get concerned whenever they see these red X's and that kind of stuff. So the next thing I'm gonna do <clears throat> is I'm going to come in and I'm actually going to SSH to my RHEL 8 client. So I'm gonna make it easy just because my copy and paste doesn't seem to be working real well. So I'm just going to do the IP address. So my system is set up so I didn't, I don't actually have to put in a password of any kind. So if you notice my prompt was Bastion01. So it was my host name. So it was my user account at my host name and then the name of the folder that I was in at the time. I did the SSH and notice my prompt has changed. I am now actually working on my RHEL 8 client. <clears throat> now it does tell me that the system's not registered to Red Hat Insights. We're gonna fix that in a few minutes. Before I fix that, I actually wanna register it as a satellite client. So, <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to put in the information for my satellite server into my Etsy hosts file. So I'm going to be going in
to my <clears throat> Etsy host file and I'm going to put in an entry for the satellite server. Now I have a particular command that I have you do in the um, lab guide. Go ahead and do that. Um, for myself, I'm very familiar with the VI command. Ooh, ah. Except when I mess it up and don't put in the proper S. So I'm just going to use VI just because I'm comfortable and it works just as fast. Um, it would if I would actually think and talk at the same time, but you know, sometimes that's hard. So we're going to go down here. this paste properly. Nope. All right, so I did mention you want to be very, very careful about typos. So make sure you get everything typed in correctly if you are not able to copy and paste. All right, so I now set up Etsy host so the system will actually know where the satellite server is. So that is very, very important uh, because we've got to go out and we've got to get um, a bootstrap.py script. All right, so there my copy and paste worked. Oh, do you guys see what I did? I warned you guys about it and then I did it myself. I didn't put in my proper UUID. So my UUID is E3, E1. So So once again, as I mentioned, you need to make sure that you get the proper UUID in there. And you can see once I put in the right name, it all worked exactly the way it's supposed to. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to change the permission to make this bootstrap file executable. So we've got that and then, <coughs> The next thing that I have to do is run the command to actually make or to actually register this as a rel client. Now it comes up and it tells me that there's an unsafe paste and one of the things I'm going to do, let's go so fast. I'm actually gonna get rid of the backslash. So I've got everything set up. And I also wanna get rid of my prompt. I really don't want that in there. So this is actually what I wanna paste is just my bootstrap.py. Um, all 
Okay, good. So just making sure I got everything exactly right. I have my UU ID in there properly. I have the right host group and I have the right activation key. So that all looks correct. And so I'm going to go ahead and run it. Now it comes back and says that this is designed to register new systems. It wants the admin's password. If you remember the um, admin password is Red Hat. So this is going to be doing a lot of things. It's going to be pulling some packages. Um, it's going to be adding some components. So it's going to be setting this system up so it is a satellite client. Now, as it's running, we can watch and make sure, you know, that it's running success, any um, notifications, anything like that, um, that it's running. But there is a <clears throat> particular line that we're looking for. Uh, it's going to come down to a point where it's going to be adding a new certificate or, or getting a new certificate from for this host from the satellite server. Uh, so it's going to be doing that. When that happens, we're actually going to go back into the satellite web UI to go ahead and approve that certificate being issued. Uh, in older versions of satellite, you had to do this manually. In uh, the current version of Red Hat Satellite, it will automatically approve that certificate if you don't. Now, one of the things that it will tell you is that it will actually wait for this certificate to be approved for up to 10 minutes. And we don't really want to take that amount of time. Ah, and there's the line I'm looking for right there. As your bootstrap.py command is running, it'll come to this point where it's going to tell you uh, running, it'll give you a date and time, it'll be opt puppet labs, puppet bin, puppet agent, test, no opt tags, no such tag, wait for cert 10. You'll see the same line. The only thing that will really be different is possibly the time um, if you're running it today. Obviously, if you run it a different day, the day will be different. So I'm now gonna come into my web UI. I'm gonna go to infrastructure and I'm going to go to capsules. So we only have one capsule. It is part of our satellite server. So I'm going to go ahead and click on its name. And it tells me information. It gives me an overview of the um, capsule. I can look at services logs, puppet information, but I'm gonna go into the puppet CA. And <clears throat> over here to the left, there is this little triangular kind of a warning symbol and it says pending. So I'm just gonna click on the one and it actually shows me this client I'm trying to register. Over to the far right, there is an action of sign. And so I'm just going to go ahead and sign this certificate. It'll take a second. So I've never seen that particular entry before, but it actually did sign it, it shows up. And in the background, I can actually see that it did continue to run. Um, so after I clicked on that, um, so this is the line that I was looking at. So it came in, it added some additional uh, repositories or uh, RPMs. And so that has finished successfully. So now we come back here to our command line session. <clears throat> and I am now going to go ahead and register this system with Red Hat Insights. Now this will take just a minute. Ah, so um, right now, actually, if I could kind of get everybody's attention, uh, right now I'm just doing the demo. When I'm finished, which actually won't be too much longer, then I'm gonna turn you guys loose on the, or turn you guys loose on the hands-on lab. So if you guys wanna kind of follow along with me right now, 
and then in a few minutes we'll actually get to the point of you guys actually doing the labs yourself because I kind of want to give you guys a kind of step-by-step tour of what you're going to be doing and then um, you guys will have plenty of time to actually do the lab yourself uh, once I've actually finished with the demo. All right, so you can see my system has now registered with Red Hat Insights. Now it tells me that I can see the In Insights console <clears throat> at cloud.redhat.com insights, but I actually want to deal with this system through my satellite server. So that's what we're going to be doing at this point. Um, so I'm actually going to exit out of the client system. Now, this is actually very important because in a minute, I'm actually going to doing SSH in satellite server itself. And if I go from the host to the satellite, I don't have to worry about a password. Or if I go from the Bastion host to the client, I don't have to worry about a password. If I try to go from the client to the satellite, it's going to choke saying it's not authorized. So I need to definitely exit out of the client, get back into the Bastion host, and you can see my prompt has taken me back to the Bastion host. So that's right where I need to be for that. But <clears throat> at this point, I am going to go ahead and SSH into the satellite. And you can see it did not ask me for password, and I am now into the satellite server itself. So that's exactly where I need to be. And where did I put that? Why is my system giving me hassles today? It doesn't want to scroll. It doesn't want to do a lot of things. All right. There, that's what I wanted. <clears throat> so, because I actually need the IP address. And let's see if it'll just Allow me to do this this time. Nope. I've never had it do this before. All right, so now we'll go back down here. And we're gonna VI Etsy hosts. Once again, I gotta do my sudo.
that actually worked. Okay, so now the satellite knows how to access the client. So that is critical um, for some of the Ansible operations that we're going to be doing. So that's the only real reason why I needed to put that in Etsy host is just so that when we get into working with Ansible, it will be able to recognize that host. So it's gonna actually enable Ansible um, or some Ansible playbooks here. And it is very, very easy. So I just go to configure, go to my configure main tab. And I go down near the bottom, Ansible to roles. So I go to my roles sub tab. And at first, I does not have any Ansible roles. So I want to fix that. So I'm going to go go ahead and import them from the satellite. So it lists three possible roles. I'm going to go ahead and add them all. So I click on the checkbox or all three checkboxes and then I go ahead and click on update. So you can see I now have three Ansible roles. I'm primarily concerned about the Red Hat Insights client but I went ahead and <clears throat> select them all. So now we're actually to get into working with insights. So we're going to go to the insights tab and I'm actually gonna go to overview because I wanna show you guys something really quick. Um, for you guys, I, I have them just going or going into the, in, or the inventory Something I want to show. My system will cooperate. All right, so we have this. Um, system, or you know, we have this web page that's kind of our inventory. It shows our newest systems, but over here to the right, under optimize your experience, there is this ability to view stability issues. So this will show what issues I actually have. for this particular host. So there's basically a time sync issue. Now I'm gonna, going to go back into insights and I'm going to go to planner. This allows me to plan or create a plan to these issues. <laughs> delete this. I forgot, when you create a plan, it actually goes to your Red Hat Insights. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a plan. Looks like we're brand new. For plan name, I'm just going to call it 7-8 plan. Now I could add it to an existing plan if I had one, obviously I don't at this point. Then I can determine where I'm going to apply this plan. It could be a particular system group. It could be a specific system. I'm just going to leave it as all systems. And now there are two issues with the dump um, issue and there's an Amazon time sync issue. I'm just going to go ahead and click on the checkbox to select both of them. So I wanna fix both of them. Now this is going to set up a rule that, or actually two rules that have Ansible support. I can click on save. 
And so I have a couple actions. Um, I, I could look at the systems, but we only have the one system. And this is telling me the playbook, and I'm just going to go ahead and run this playbook. And so it is going out to my system. The Ansible playbook is remediating these issues. And why did my task fail? Oh, this is a new one. I have not seen this before. Let's take a look at this subtask. <clears throat> And not giving me enough to go on. Unless I messed that up. Oh, yep, I did. Yeah. As know what I did wrong? Let's go ahead and take a look at my Etsy host file again. You guys remember I mentioned that typos are the thing you've really got to watch out for here? All right, so we really have to go ahead and put in the right name. Yep, so all right, so now I'm going to go ahead and try and run my playbook. And it sometimes takes a little bit. Now, for those of you that are going to request your complimentary access, um, you will have the ability to work with the satellite server. So anything else you wanna, you know, look at as far as satellite goes, <clears throat> you have that ability. Ah, now that's the result I was looking for, success. So uh, yes, just make sure that you get the right host name in there. Otherwise, as you guys already saw, you will get a failure. So that concludes the demo section of this.